Thanks, Marinjo and the uh, British Library for organizing these events. Um, and uh, nice to meet you here. Uh, so my name is Liang Xiu Han. You can call me Liang Xiu or Han. That's all uh, fine for me. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, so yes, uh, as uh, Marinjo said, uh, my, my talk is really uh, have the uh, different aspect, so in two ways. One way is that I, uh, with augmented big data processing, because previous uh, talk, they only talk about how to, uh, yeah, how to develop some uh, data, uh, data analytics using mach image processing and machine learning to process uh, <coughs> images. However, they, they didn't mention about how to speed up such kind of uh, application, because as you know, uh, some resolutions very, um, like images, 3,000 times, times 4,000, yeah? So how to deal with this uh, kind of image? So um, because my, my research areas in the uh, large scale data processing and analytics both, focus on both aspects, so that's why um, I include <coughs> some element, I hope you like it. Um, so I think the underlying techniques for the using image processing and the machine learning, they are sim similar, um, but uh, with augmented big data processing, so that that might give you some insight. Okay, thanks very much. So, so I think I'm not going to talk more detail about data tsunami, uh, and we have images, uh, and uh, this Facebook, and also the, uh, because due to time limitation, so, and also the, bi uh, the climate, uh, data from NASA and also SKE from the uh, astronomy. So let's ha let's have a look what happens in the uh, internet uh, minute. So if you look bleaker images, so the uh, actually they got the 20 million photo view in minute. So you can you can imagine how big data it is. So so now we are coming into the very big data as a big data arrow data rich. Sometimes uh, there is some alternative uh, changeable term. Sometimes you say large scale data processing, uh, data intensive research, data intensive computing, data centric or data driven research. So this is all the exchangeable terms. So you can see that here is data volume. This uh, according to the IDC report, 35 zettabytes. So if you can imagine, so how big that is. So we need, uh, we need how, how we, uh, how we are using this such big data to lead in the uh, scientific discovery. So I'm not going to tell, uh, talk about what's the big data, but I'm going to mainly talk about what the challenge, challenge are. So the first challenge for the moment we're focused on is that how to field, field and reduce the amount of data to enable uh, timely insight and the decisions. This we call data analytics. Sometimes you, you might say, okay, that's computational modeling. Okay, th this is different term. Another one aspect is how to process and storing this large scale data. So sometimes in our computing science area, we say data movement and the storage, uh, reduce the data storage cost. So data processing, <coughs> parallel, and the distributed high performance computing. So I'm going to talk about both. So uh, here is uh, my work done uh, in the uh, uh, application to life sciences. So this is a BBSRC funded project. Uh, basically, it's a cloud uh, approach using cloud computing to automatic gene expression pattern recognition and annotation over large scale data images. So basically, for this project, we focus on two aspects. The first one is that automatic gene expression pattern <laughs> recognition and annotation. So I think this annotation Basically, it's very similar to the annotations when you annotate the uh, uh, British library, uh, library the text uh, 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 transcripts. And the second goal is that development of parallel processing <coughs> approaches to allow the efficient exploit, uh, exploitation uh, of the cloud computing, we call the data processing, and also uh, development of g generic data reuse mechanism that can reduce the data movement and reduce the cost, data storage cost in the cloud. So <coughs> these are both, focus on both data analytic and data processing. So let's have a look, what's the, this kind of uh, uh, task? So um, in the biology, uh, biology uh, bioscience area, so they also have some annotation, annotation task. So basically, the uh, 
biologists, the, the use the some ontological term, this is an ontology term, stored in the database. But the, what the biologists, what they want to do is that they try to annotate this ontological term with these gene expression patterns. So basically, it is uh, uh, very similar to when you uh, annotate the uh, terms with the, your transcript in, the, um, in your, this uh, uh, library. So this is gene expression patterns. We, we want to annotate. Biologists normally they, they will annotate humerus. This is humerus. Current, the, OK, sorry. <laughs> OK. So current work, what the what they are doing, bio, uh, biologists, what they are doing is that they use a manually annota uh, annotation, the manual annotation. So this is definitely costly uh, and time consuming. So that's why the, when we talked with the, this, this project actually we, um, in collaboration with Medical Research Council, uh, we, we talked uh, talk with the biologists and they said, okay, they want automating this process. So that's why this pr uh, task can, so uh, here, I just show you how uh, this image, how they acquire this image. So basically, this is a, a, a mouse embryo. So when they actually they slice this mouse embryo, so basically they slice, and then they took a picture, and like this, they took the different position picture. And what, yes, uh, the, the, the task is that I give you this picture. Can you please uh, automatically annotate the gene, for example, here, read? Can you un automatically annotate this rib using machine learning algorithm? So that's our task. Um, so, so the challenges, what the challenges we're facing. So basically, for the moment, the uh, ontological term around uh, 1,500, uh, 1, 1, and uh, the uh, data set is 40 terabytes. So you can imagine, if you use a manual annotation, that's, that's will spend, uh, that's will spend your uh, cost your time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Um, so and also you just you already just saw that image and uh, there there is multi gene expression pattern coexisting in the image. So uh, variable shape you just say you just saw that uh, they acquire the image they use a different position. So the number of images associated with a certain image uh, is also uneven. So in the and the uh, uh, dimensionality of the each image is high, 3K times 4K. So as I said, sorry, <laughs> so do, do not, <laughs> yes, that's mine, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so for, for that, for, to automating, to automating <laughs> this, um, <laughs> sorry. Okay, I, I think, yeah, that, I oh, think yeah. It's, that's mine, yeah. I think it's finished, yeah? It's finished. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, okay. So the uh, aut automating, for this, uh, for, uh, to automating this uh, task, what we do is that this is a manual annotation, that's database, basically, uh, that database, and the images stored in the file systems, and then we use integrated images and the image processing feature extraction. This is a normal, uh, 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 normal the image processing and user machine learning approach to do the data mining task. So this is our framework. Uh, the core images, what, uh, the core <coughs> methodology, what we use is that uh, we use image processing techniques, web late transform, um, and uh, like uh, machine learning uh, techniques. And also here, I said, here is like uh, uh, image filtering. So this is after the filtering. And uh, this is a wavelet transform uh, after the uh, wavelet decomposition. Uh, and yes, yeah, certainly here we have, we have used a lot of uh, mathematical equation. I don't want to go, to go to detail. However, we did have this uh, paper already published in the bioinformatics. So you can search from the, um, from the internet. So uh, based on this uh, result, we, we got pre a pretty uh, promising result. Uh, so, uh, so basically, if you look why I picked up this uh, image here, uh, so this is the image uh, previously were annotated by a human. human uh, and actually, human didn't, I didn't, uh, did, didn't recognize these patterns. However, the machines recognize. So that's why I want to pick up, uh, pick up this to show the why automating process is so important. Um, and also, the, is also not, 
uh, objective. So for, for, the, for this, because as, as I just, uh, just already uh, mentioned, uh, these images, 3,000 times 4,000, if let's say pixels or if you, you, we use a wavelet to transform, the coefficients, so it will be 3,000 times 4,000, it's so big, so big the, uh, data. And especially where we're facing the 40 terabytes data, you know, so that's very big. So how, how do we speed up uh, such application? So the parallels, uh, parallelization comes. So that's why in our this case, we actually develop some uh, parallel uh, parallel processing method using MPI. Uh, this is a parallel programming model and MapReduce. I I I, uh, I assume you already know that MapReduce is very famous um, uh, programming model, parallel programming model. So when we consider this parallel uh, parallel, when we want to parallelize uh, application, what we need to think how to distribute the workloads or decompose uh, algorithm into the parts. So just uh, uh, as you, this morning you already mentioned, you, you only run your com programming on one computer, yeah? So what we do is that we try to develop efficient algorithm to run different computer. So that's why today I didn't bring my demo. So the, the reason is that uh, our uh, high, high performance cluster in, within our university in, uh, uh, internet, so I can't access now. So, so, uh, so, so for the to parallelization, we need to consider how to distribute workloads or decompose uh, algorithm into the parts, and how to map the task onto the various computing nodes into uh, to execute this subtask in uh, parallel, and also how to coordinate and communicate subtasks. So this is also we also need to develop some algorithm. It's not just say okay, I through through the my programming onto the different nodes, you can just run it. That's not not possible. So um, so this is the uh, some implementation what uh, what we already done. Here is uh, uh, the we we use the MP, uh, map reduce and um, uh, MPI message passing interface. We already had uh, some papers published. So I don't. Uh, due to time limitation, I don't want to go, uh, go into detail. So basically, if you only develop some data mining algorithm using traditional way, they cannot run uh, parallel uh, automatically. So you have to adapt your uh, machine learning algorithm uh, to decompose your machine learning algorithm into the part to run, to be able to run mm -hmm. the on cloud computing or cluster or high, uh, any uh, distributed nodes. So this is what I would like to say. Here is some MapReduce um, implementation <coughs> we already implemented. Uh, basically, MapReduce, MapReduce uh, 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 algorithm basically is that how uh, is because this is already uh, uh, being developed by uh, no the algorithm developed by Google, but later on there's some uh, people they uh, implement by Apache, they implement open source, it's called Hadoop. Hadoop, they actually they use this MapReduce. So, so the, uh, the, the challenge is that, challenge is that because framework already, already uh, there, but the challenge is that how, how can you adapt your machine learning algorithm into this kind of map job and reduce job? This is a, a hard part. Um, so, so I think we, um, and another one is, is that also the MPI, uh, uh, this is MPI uh, implementation, is also the hard part is that how you decompose your uh, algorithm into the uh, 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 parallel. So, so this is a sum, uh, some result what we got. If you can see, MPI result is quite good. This is a super linear, super linear speed up, basically. So, um, it's map reduce uh, for our this data set is not very good, uh, but it still accelerate. So I mean, it is still <laughs> it is still speed up the application. <laughs> However, it's not good, but for this MPI is quite good. Uh, do remember when we uh, when some some people maybe uh, I mean <coughs> most of people they have some mi uh, misunderstanding the map reduce and the map uh, MPI because this parallel programming model not. Not every programming can be adapted to the MapReduce. Not every programming can be adapted to the uh, 
MPI, this really depends upon your algorithm. For example, if my algorithm, they have uh, a lot of uh, uh, communication between the each process, process, and then it's very hard to adapt it into the MapReduce, you know, because uh, uh, it, it, because that might it might be good if you use the um, MPI, but if your uh, each process can be run simultaneously, they don't have any communication. That you might be uh, that might be suitable for using the MapReduce. So some people say, okay, right, MapReduce is so f uh, so famous. Uh, I would like to use MapReduce to adapt. However, um, it's not necessarily if you use MapReduce, it, it will accelerate your um, application. It really definitely uh, it really depends upon your <coughs> algorithm. Um, so uh, and another thing is that. We, in this project, we also use cloud computing. So cloud computing, I think definitely everybody knows that. Uh, actually, it is a typical uh, 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 distributed computing um, systems, um, but, uh, but it is with augmented business model. Technically, cloud computing offers resources, software uh, applications, infrastructures over the internet to users. At a business level, they provide, uh, the cloud provider leads their resources. So basically, you can, pay, you can pay by your credit card, they rent your uh, software uh, environment, it, they rent your software compu uh, no, computer nodes. So basically, we use the, uh, we call the infrastructure as a service. So basically, we kind of like we rent their whole the computer nodes, virtual nodes, and then we we configure by ourselves. So basically, we use uh, IaaS because we got a lot of control on that. So this is the um, uh, cloud computing, basically the evolution there. I, I don't want to go, uh, go through more detail, <laughs> but it's just because I, I, I did that. OK, so, uh, so, so can we directly migrate my, my this machine learning uh, image processing machine learning algorithm into the cloud? No, you can't. So, so the issues with the migration of this kind of large scale data process applications uh, uh, to the cloud, you need to face the storage cost because cloud will charge you. If you, if you have a large scale data, you, when you store it into the cloud, it charge you per month. Uh, and also, no, so, uh, it's not uh, not so so big, uh, but uh, uh, it's not so so big money. But uh, but if you you uh, you store the large large scale data set, that's very big, and also computation cost, uh, and also the um, and also transfer cost. So in that case, we need to think about, as I just said, you cannot say directly through your pro, uh, pro programming into the cloud. Can, uh, it, it cannot automatically run for you. You have to adapt it. The firstly, you have to adapt it. Uh, either you use a parallel processing, you can uh, allocate your task into the virtual nodes. Uh, and also, you need to develop some efficient algorithm. So for example, uh, in our case, we developed some uh, uh, called cost model, we call the automatic data reuse mechanism to reduce this computational cost. So this is the, uh, this is the, um, the, the workflow for, the, uh, for our task. For example, here input, uh, I, I input an image, and then you do some <coughs> pres, uh, processing, and then you do some classification, and give me result, annotation. Um, and then the, uh, this is the, the whole workflow. Uh, and we developed, we, we developed a PatriNet based. I, I think this is a really rather technical. Um, I don't want to go into detail. We still, we also had uh, this kind of papers already published. Uh, actually, uh, our this model is quite good, Pat uh, PatriNet. The, uh, the, this Patri model, the purpose is try to minimize the running cost on the cloud. So, <laughs> Um, and uh, I think that's the uh, one case. So we we use we were not uh, only develop the uh, uh, data mining algorithm uh, using image processing and machine learning algorithm to develop the uh, uh, to make this uh, to automatic uh, rec recognize um, uh, gene expression patterns, but also we develop uh, the uh, parallel processing um, uh, models for efficiently run the cloud. So the other. Uh, uh, project is that this is this is, this was fun this is funded actually for the moment we are still running uh, this is funded by EPSRC Doris Hodgkins um, so 
So this is called automatic detection of features in retina images to improve di diagnosis of eye diseases. Um, so we, in, colla uh, in collaboration with the uh, Opts, this is a leading image company for retina screening. So this image, we uh, SL images. Uh, our task is mainly development of image pattern recognition method to extract features from uh, patient retina images. Uh, so we, uh, again, it's, again, we, we think the uh, time limitation, so I didn't put uh, much detailed techniques. But uh, the main task is that automating process. So it's exact, also similar to a uh, previous one, but uh, uh, the different purpose. So we already had uh, published uh, these um, four papers, but we still have a uh, following more work. Um, and uh, this is some result, uh, and if you can see. So basically, uh, this is, a, I think this is glaucoma. So we, we, for the moment, we're detecting glaucoma, uh, glaucoma eye diseases. The first, you need a uh, segment. We, we use segmentation techniques. We use the uh, image processing techniques. Um, we use uh, classification techniques. Uh, so basically, we try to detect uh, whether this image has glaucoma diseases or not, or and which stages. So, so this is the uh, summer um, result. Um, and also another project is that um, this is was funded. Uh, this is funded for the moment we're still doing, but we, we already have some preliminary result. This is funded by Sustainability Society Networks, RCUK Digital Program. Uh, so automatic diagnosis of uh, crop disease from images. Uh, the main goal is also to develop software uh, and algorithm to identify crop disease and the severity assessment. So basically, if you look, so this is a framework. I don't want to go into detail. And uh, if you look these images, uh, the, this image uh, taken by a camera, camera film by a Fera. So uh, I mean, in, in collaboration, uh, in collaboration with uh, Fera, Food and Environment Research Agency. Uh, so the the expert they took some images uh, using the camera film. So basically, these are crops when they walk in crops uh, field, and then the uh, here is a target leaf, and here this yellow part that's a disease is called yellow rust uh, septora. So basically, uh, our task is that how we, uh, no, how, how we identify what kind of disease this, uh, this uh, leaf has and how se severe it is. So that's our task. What we do is that uh, is also automating this process because, because you know, uh, FERA, they have um, very large field across the UK, at least 40, I think, across the UK. Um, uh, expert, I think this is, uh, the, uh, they spend a lot of time to, to take an image and manually to, uh, to look at and then upload to their crop monitors, yeah? Uh, and then they, uh, uh, they are also time consuming. They want to automate in this process. So that's why what our task is that to automate in this process. Uh, so we use the, some feature extraction. We firstly we segment firstly we segment target leaf from the complicated background, and then we also use super pixels. So we use mark controlled watershed uh, seg uh, transform tra segmentation techniques. So here is some uh, uh, segmentation result. So basically we segment <coughs> out the uh, background, and also we use super pixels to group the pixels, uh, and then. So here is a super pixel. So why we want to do that? The reason is that we to try to reduce the features. So previously, as I said, 3,000 times 4,000, that's very big. And uh, if we use super pixel, that can, can group the pixels into the group <coughs> and also the, uh, reduce the uh, features. And then the feature, we, we use some different features, uh, text features, gradient features, and gable features, biologically inspired features, uh, and uh, here is some features result. Uh, here are some features we use the mathematical, so you don't don't have to look at because this is very 
Yeah, very mathematical. And uh, so this is our reason. Uh, this, the, no, this is our feature selection process. Um, and uh, let's have a look. We we kind of we we, we only use twenty images to to uh, to train it, uh, <coughs> the septra and the yellow rust we together combined together. And uh, we have we tested one hundred eighty images. We use SVM non non linear SVM ANN. It's kind of like SVM is quite uh, perform well. Uh, and uh, we also tested the, the uh, severity assessment. Uh, this is a dice uh, assessment. So basically, this is all of automatically labeled. So if you look, so we can see uh, uh, disease region. <coughs> so there, uh, this is nine point uh, percent. So actually, we uh, we we compare our result uh, against the expert estimation. So the, this the, they're quite happy with our result. So this is some result about this. Uh, processing time for the moment. <coughs> this one is just the sequential code. It's not parallelized. It's, uh, for the moment, it's around uh, two, two minutes when we classify one image. But uh, yeah, certainly we consider if we really uh, real time one, one second. So we might, we, we, we later on, we will consider the uh, uh, parallel process. Yeah, I think the, that's it. So I think I don't want to. Um, but uh, yeah, certainly I think today's um, Today's talk is uh, all of talks are very interesting, so um, I'm very happy to uh, explore other areas because for the moment our group we're doing the big data processing and uh, analytics. I think the uh, for the moment uh, uh, what we do is that uh, um, uh, so so is that uh, health for the moment what what we're e exploring health food energy so we uh, we use some uh, large scale data processing approach. And man manufacturing and also CT planning, we uh, collaboration with Manchester Council, uh, cybersecurity as well. So certainly, uh, I'm uh, certainly I'm very interested in collaboration with you here, maybe in the relation to the uh, heritage or culture and the old library. Okay, thank you very much for listening.